Hey, it's Brayden with Outdoor Manly, and I'm here with Jake from Wild Jake Survival. We're going to be testing the Tops Accessed Alpha. What are we going to be learning today, Jake? Well, what we're going to do with this knife is we're going to actually set different types of traps and see how well it handles carving through the, the wood and, and making the minute uh, angles that we need to actually set these traps. Um, we'll see how this rugged knife uh, holds up to it. It looks pretty stout, so I think it'll do well. It's got a short blade, so we'll have lots of control, and uh, we'll have to see how it handles what we need it to do. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to get the material that we need to make these traps. We're going to need a lot of straight wood. So we're going to cut some long straight pieces, and then cut those straight pieces up to actually uh, make the different traps. And then we'll use our drag snare, which is pretty simple. So I'm going to take this long piece that's straight right here. I'm going to bend this over and I'm going to push to see how well I can get this to cut through this. Once you get it going, it looks like it's cutting okay. Let's uh, try hacking with it because it's so stout. There we go. All right, well, let's see how this cuts up. The first one that I'm gonna do, since it needs the most or parts to it, is the spring snare. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually cut all the pieces for that. I'm gonna need this piece right here is going to be my trigger. Then I'm gonna need a piece for um, my wedge and some other parts. You'll see them when, I, when we actually put it together, it'll make more sense. Works much better as a as a blunt hatchet. All right, we're gonna need this piece. So one of the things I'm gonna do is actually take that and sharpen that end, and then uh, I want to cut this into get flat. With There's time one, and I'm gonna need and how uh, it works to be able to really one, two, three, four, and be five. With it. But six more pieces for this trap. So you gotta get used to it. I'll get and that each going. Each tool has its own pluses and minuses and you just gotta weigh out your options and see what you like. You just gotta get familiar with the knife and how it works to be able to really comfortably go out and be effective with it. But that's with any tool. Right. You gotta get used to it. And each tool has its own pluses and minuses and you just gotta weigh out your options and see what you like. All right. So let me lay this out for you. We've got these two pieces here. Those two pieces. This is going to be, once we stand these up, this here is going to be the piece that goes here like this and then we're going to have a line that's attached to this it's going to come around and we'll set it all up and we've got this piece here and then we're going to need one more piece so this is taking one two three four five we need one more six pieces if you're setting traps with green, fresh cut wood, then the animals will smell that. And it, a lot of times, if uh, it's unfamiliar or they notice that it's different than it was three hours ago when they walked by it last time, they'll be a little cautious. So now I've got my last piece for this trap. All right, we need our cord and then we'll set that one. To make this easier for everybody to see the traps that we actually made, we're going to uh, go ahead and set them in this grassy area in this park just so that you can see what they actually look like and how they should be set. Now, if you were going to set these, the place you'd want to set them is on a game trail. So you'd want to find heavy game trails that are used and then 
that are specific to that animal that you're trying to trap and set them there. Now this first one can be used as a foot snare or it can be used as a stranglehold snare. We're going to set it as a foot snare. We want a stout branch that's got a lot of a lot of spring to it, okay? That would be over or near just off to the side of our trail. So we're gonna take our cord. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie that cord onto here. Now, what I'm going to tie is actually a clove hitch. And the reason I'm gonna tie a clove hitch instead of a different type of knot is because a clove hitch is really easy to untie when I need to untie it. Now here's my clove hitch. Now the thing about a clove hitch is that under load it stays taut and it won't come untied. But as soon as I let up on it, it's real easy to untie. So that's the advantage of having a clove hitch. Okay, so if this was our trail that comes right through here, then what we're going to do is we're going to set this trap so it's over the trail so that the pressure plate that this trap uses is on the trail itself. And one thing that you can do is move, remove some of the dirt and things so that there's a space so that when they push down on it they push into the trail and, and set the trap off. Um, we're going to see if we can use this knife kind of as our hammer too because of how stout it is. These stakes that I'm driving into the ground would be off of the trail. The trail would be in here and I would put these out on the side of the trail wide enough so that I'm not interfering with the trail itself. Now when I set this one, this stake here needs to be needs to be in a position where it will catch it'll be able to push against our small toggle so I need to make sure that it's not too far out now when we cut these stakes what we did is we used branches that were forked already so that we didn't have to create forks and we're using the strength of the the branch to actually hold this for us now this one is going to be our one that goes in between so we want these to be out here, like this, kind of towards the edges of the, of the trap. This one is our toggle, or our trigger, and this one is our upright like that. And that should work. Okay. What we're gonna decide on is how how springy we want this to be, how high we want this to lift off the ground. We're going to tie another clove hitch because remember, clove hitches work really well under a load. And this is definitely going to have a load on it. Then I'm going to take this, I'm going to tuck it back in on itself like that. Now, you'll see that this slips really easy, but when it tightens up and they're hanging and it's pulling, it's not going to loosen and, and give way. So, all right, spring snare, there we go.
trigger. Trigger. It's high off the ground. So that when we I always want to make sure that you are clear of the trap when you're setting it so that when you set it you don't become caught in it okay there's our trap that's our spring snare and to disguise it we can cover it up with leaves on the trail and that's our trigger now this is the trail these are off the trail and we would funnel the animal to the trail okay so as and I can put pieces going across this way too so they don't have to step right on it they can step anywhere in it and it would it would set it off but if I were to step on it and push any of those other pieces, then that's how fast it works. Works really well. All right. There you go. That's a spring snare. All right, guys. Well, thanks, Jake, for teaching us those traps. What did you think of the blade? All in all, this blade's got a lot of gear with it. Um, and for a search and rescue knife, it's great. Um, for a skills knife, for bushcraft, I think that it's it's lacking in a lot of areas. Um, if that's all you had, you could get the job done, but it'd be much more difficult. So, um, it's a great knife for what it was designed for. Perfect. All right, well, we're gonna pass this on to the next YouTuber, and thanks for coming to watch our videos. Be sure to check out Wild Jake's Survival. Go subscribe to his, his channel. Subscribe to Outdoor Manly as well if you haven't already and then go and check out the finale on Blade HQ Also check out Crockett 20s video the late Boy Scouts video and whoever else is after us. So all right guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see ya. Thanks